Hello, I am Dr. Manal Mitwali. I'm going to talk about thyroid cancer. I'm from South Wales University. The incidence of thyroid cancer is increasing, especially in the papillary thyroid carcinoma and in the pediatric population. And this is attributed to better detection of incidental microadenomas. There is no screening program for detection of thyroid cancer. It's only done for familial uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma associated with gene mutation. So family history of thyroid cancer should be taken in each case of thyroid nodules. Risk factors to develop thyroid cancer include neck radiation in childhood, Hashimoto thyroiditis, which carries the risk of de uh, development of lymphoma, family history of cancer thyroid, Cowden syndrome, which is symptomatizing by carpet pile tongue, microcephaly, mild learning disability, with or without benign or malignant breast disease. Uh, talking about factors affecting prognosis, uh, that some factors are associated with higher risk of recurrence and mortality, and these include age of the patients, so patients who are more than 40 years old or less than 20 years old have higher risk of recurrence and death. Male patients, big tumor size, extrathyroidal extension, and follicular thyroid carcinoma has poorer prognosis than papillary thyroid carcinoma. Most, thi most thyroid nodules are benign. Moreover, thyroid cancer is not common in hypo or hyperthyroidism. The commonest present presentation of thyroid cancer is an incidentally discovered thyroid nodule or enlargement of a pre-existing one. And it is the resp responsibility of the general practitioners to select cases needed to be referred and the degree of urgency for each. For So thyroid nodules that can be managed in the primary care by the general practitioner include small non-palpable nodules less than one centimeter discovered incidentally and those didn't change their size for many years and without any risk factors. While patients who need an unurgent referral include those showing abnormal thyroid functions, uh, either hyper or hypothyroidism, as they need endocrinologist referral, and patients with nodules experience a sudden onset of pain, and as this may uh, indicate, most probably, bleeding in a cyst. Urgent referral is required if there is associated hoarseness of voice, cervical lymph node enlargements, rapidly en enlarged painless nodules over weeks, or thyroid nodule in a child. Thyroid mass associated with a stridor needs immediate referral at the same day. Uh, I just want to add that complete physical examination with inspection and palpation of the thyroid region, cervical lymph nodes, supraclavicular nodes, and other nodes of the neck is mandatory with recording also of the vital signs. Thyroid function tests should be requested by the general practitioner as only eothyroid patients with thyroid nodules may have thyroid cancer while hypo- or hyperthyroid patients are unlikely to have cancer, especially in the absence of risk factors. Other investigations like ultrasound or isotopes should not be requested routinely by the general practitioners and not recommended. More, more essential assessment is requested if there is suspicion or increased probability of malignancy like aging less than 20 or more than 60, firm node fixed lymphadenopathy or family history. So then ultrasound is a sensitive investigation to diagnose thyroid cancer, especially papillary carcinoma. All patients suspected to have thyroid cancer should undergo ultrasound and as it is specific for the diagnosis of cancer thyroid, especially papillary carcinoma. The ultrasound also helps to select thyroid nodules which need fine needle aspiration cytology. Ultrasound features of malignant nodes include solid, hypoechoic than the rest of the thyroid tissue, a regular margin, anthroposterior diameter bigger than the transverse diameter, that means taller than wider, calcification around the periphery. Then 
from U1 to U5 is needed to assess the risk of malignancy and guide fine needle aspiration cytology. U1 and U2 indicate benign nodule with no need for fine needle aspiration cytology. U3 is equivocal or indeterminate. U4 is suspicious of malignancy, while U5 indicates malignancy. U3, U4, and U5 need fine needle aspiration cytology. Results of fine needle aspiration cytology are categorized from thigh 1 to thigh 5. Thigh 1 indicates poor preparation technique and is not diagnostic. Needs ultrasound assessment with or without repetition of fine needle aspiration cytology. While thigh 2 indicates non-neoplastic tissue, uh, that means normal thyroid tissue, colloid nodules, or thyroiditis. Thigh 2C refers to cyst containing an abundance of fluids, repeated, and in such case repeated, uh, fine needle aspiration cytology if there is any clinical suspicion of malignancy or ultrasound is indeterminate or suspicious. Thigh 3 indicates possibility of neoplasm, and it's subdivided into thigh 3A and thigh 3F. Thigh 3A, when there are atypical features, but not enough to suspect malignancy. So it needs further investigations, including ultrasound with or without fine needle aspiration cytology. While Thigh 3F indicates follicular adenoma or carcinoma, and in such case, diagnostic hemothyroidectomy is required for accurate diagnosis. Thigh 4 is suspicious of malignancy, and it needs diagnostic hemothyroidectomy for definitive diagnosis. And type of malignancy has to be known, and it's usually papillary carcinoma in most cases. Thigh 5 is diagnostic of malignancy, and management is planned according to the type of the tumor. Total thyroidectomy is usually the treatment of choice for papillary or medullary thyroid carcinoma. This was an overview for thyroid cancer. Thank you very much for listening.